Sometimes in the late afternoon when the sun is setting, with the television picking up the five o'clock news of the world via satellite and supper cooking in the microwave oven, I like to reflect on how much the world has changed over the past 50 years. Microcomputers, supersonic passenger planes, fax machines, video conferencing, and these are just a few changes I've seen in my lifetime. My parents lived at the beginning of this century and had to witness far greater changes even than I have. Saw the horse and buggy replaced by the automobile. Saw the candle and the oil lamp give way to electricity in every home. And the telephone and television. It must have been like being born on one planet, being effortlessly transported by some friendly alien to an entirely different and strange world. My parents not only lived with these tremendous changes, they managed to thrive with them. They welcomed the new, they did not cling rigidly to the old ways, but they were flexible. They believed in the good as well as in the terrible. And the will to survive was stronger than the will of any man or the power of any machine. A strong character is not a rigid character. In fact, exactly the opposite is true. Although it's important to be firm when you know something is right and to maintain that right position, even when the crowd is going against you and wants to put you down, nobody is infallible or invincible. Sometimes when the tide has run against you for a long time, it may be that what you held as a certainty was in fact not true. It's also smart to be able to see more than one way to accomplish a task. Because when the plan that served you so well for so long doesn't work anymore, then it's time to find another way. It's time to move on, to change, to compromise, or you'll risk snapping like a dead branch in a stiff breeze. When it comes to lasting a long time, being strong, but knowing when to bend, the trees have a lot to teach us. I've experienced a hurricane and had a chance to witness close up and personal what a combination of wind and water can do to everything that stands in its path. At the same time, the wind blew with such force that century-old trees were blown over like so many toy soldiers standing on parade knocked down by a toddler at play. However, the enormous willows, some standing tall as a house, lithe and flexible, and bending and bowing gracefully to the slightest breeze or to the mightiest gust, they were almost the only large objects left standing after the air had cleared. Everything that tried to oppose the storm's fury was damaged or destroyed. Everything that gave way, that was strong yet flexible, survived. Maybe some of you remember playing the game of scissors, stone, and paper when you were kids. This game teaches a child to think about the nature of materials how something can be strong or appropriate in one situation and yet be the wrong tool. It also teaches a child to vary his approach, to be flexible and recognize that even as you are trying to outsmart the other guy, the other guy is also trying to outsmart you. It remains to be seen how the great changes we are seeing right now in our own day, the laptop computer, and the rise of the internet, it remains to be seen how these changes will affect our own lives and the lives of our children. It's entirely possible and even likely that nothing will ever turn out as we expect. And so no matter how much we prepare for one turn of fate, something will sneak up from the blind side. When that time comes, as it will, the people who survive and even triumph over the unanticipated will be people who are ready to adapt. They will step out of the path of the charging bull. They will step back and let something else bear the brunt of impact. It's always been important to be flexible and farsighted. And when we can't anticipate being prepared for all possibilities. 
But now, let's look back in time for a moment. The oldest and longest lasting empire in the world is that of the Chinese. Many emperors, many reigns, but always the empire endured. It wasn't because of military power or tremendous wealth. The real reason the Chinese empire lasted so long was because of the work of two very different philosophers. The first, Confucius, he supplied the theories by which the imperial government was conducted. He was essentially a lawgiver, a thinker who supplied some fixed beacons for navigating the ship of state into the unknown future. The second philosopher, whose name was Lao Tse, had a very different perspective, but he also placed a very modern kind of emphasis on the need for intuition and the ability to react quickly to change. Lao Tse pointed out that sometimes it is best to advance by retreating. Wars can be won by losing a few battles. Sometimes it is best to resist like the tall grasses bending in the wind. A powerful ocean wave smashing onto a beach may wash away a sand dune, but the individual grain of sand simply goes with the flow. By incorporating both these perspectives, the ancient Chinese emperor developed a structure similar to that of modern buildings in Los Angeles that are built to withstand earthquakes. Flexibility is simple in theory, but tremendously challenging in practice. To be flexible does not mean to be weak, to flounder about aimlessly and confused because we think there's nothing to be done. It requires self-discipline. Flexibility requires a cool head, balance, and judgment. Think of the bullfighter in the arena. He knows the bull is powerful, but the bull also always charges in a straight line while he can step aside and the bull is enraged while the fighter is cool and skilled. His only enemy really is himself. If he fears the noise of the crowd or the bull's hot breath, then the bullfighter is the doomed one. But if he controls his nerves, then the ear and the tail and the cries of the crowd will be for him. Up to now, we've mostly talked about what might be called tactical flexibility. More difficult is the inner flexibility and long range adaptability that are called for from the person who wants not just to survive, but succeed. Whenever you achieve a hard won success, it's always because you've been able to create a flexible response to the conflicting needs and ambitions and feelings of other people. You've been able to sidestep the accidents of fate and the innate tendency we all have to depend on yesterday's solutions to solve today's problems. These philosophers who called themselves Stoics taught that in order simply to survive in life, you must learn to take responsibility for the way things affect you. You must learn to bend with the wind of forces too great for your control to be firm but fair, to be clear and consistent but flexible, is to possess maturity. A wise and flexible old gentleman used to dine every month in his club downtown, loved to regale companions with the fruits of his many years of experience. Well, this old man who was so old and so wise and so flexible has one ironclad rule for dealing with other people. He said, if a man fools me once, that's not nice, and I remember it. And if the same man fools me a second time, I think, shame on you. If the same fellow tricks me a third time, well, I have been warned, and I think, shame on me. Fool me one, that's not nice. Fool me two, shame on you. Fool me three, shame on me.